Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist for Tackless Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing creating custom shapes for use with the CMU wall tool. A couple of notes about this video. We're going to be creating a specific shape, a 12 by 12 by 16 inch masonry unit with a notch on the right hand side. We're going to model the shape in Tackless Structures using native tools. Then we will export that shape to a SketchUp file or .skp and then import that into the shape catalog so we can use it with the CMU wall tool. There are other methods for creating shapes and creating shape geometry, but this method allows us the most control over the positioning of the block when we export it. We're also going to be utilizing a PDF as a reference inside the model today. However, we will not be tracing that PDF and we will be using construction lines to lay out our shape boundaries. We'll be doing this so that you can see the alternative approach to using a PDF but not being able to trust its geometry. So with that, let's begin. To start, we've already imported our reference PDF. Now we're only going to be using this as a visual reference. We won't be snapping to the line work. Although this PDF is actually pretty accurate, we do want to illustrate how you can go about creating guides for yourself to trace uh, in the model to create your shape. So we'll use, be using this PDF for dimensions only. If you trust your source PDF, feel free to trace it. Okay, we're going to begin by laying out our basic shape. We're going to use the construction objects or construction lines found on the edit ribbon. And we're going to do one side, 11 and 5 eighths in distance, pick a start point, snap perpendicularly and key in that distance. Our extension lines are a little too long here, so I'm going to just show, shorten those up in the properties pane by selecting the construction line. And then I'm going to copy this one over a distance, uh, six, 15 inches and 5 eighths. Now we'll go ahead and add another construction line. And then we can copy that up to form the overall outside perimeter of our block. Next, we're going to use construction lines to go ahead and, and copy those into place for our intermediate uh, walls here. And we'll use the center line and then offset just half of the overall wall thickness of so 5 8 And then after this, we'll go ahead and do the four sides. Now that we've laid out our general shape using construction lines, including the wall thicknesses, uh, we can go ahead and use the slab tool to create our overall block shape. And that's found on the concrete ribbon. But we're going to give this slab a unique name so we know that it's actually a masonry unit that's 12 by 12 by 16. And we're going to make sure that the thickness is to 12 inches so we get the right depth for our block. I'm going to go ahead and just trace the exterior. And turn that transparent by hitting Control 2 and we can see that we have the general outside boundary. So from here what we'll need to do is actually model shapes that we'll use to cut this block for the cavities. So we'll continue to use the slab tool but what we're going to do is we're going to change the color or the class here uh, to something that's more visually recognizable and ensure that our cast unit type is precast so our shapes don't merge. And we're just going to go ahead and do the rough shape here of our cavity. Now one thing we'll want to make sure as well is that the shape sticks out a past our main block shape just a little bit so we get like that extension past. This is for when we cut the part and create the hole. Um, so we're going to want to make sure that on both sides it extends just a little bit past the surface of our block. In order to add the rounding or chamfer to our corners for our cutting object, we can hold down control and pick all four corners. Then go over to the properties pane and we can go ahead and drop down the type to rounding and add the radius, which is 5 eighths of an inch. And once we've completed that, we can then copy our cavity or our cutting part over to the next side. Ensure that you snap to the same place on both sides, otherwise you'll be misaligned as I am here on screen. We'll smooth that back one and one quarter inch. And also, if you happen to misclick, like I did here, it's really easy, is if you have direct modification on, you can just grab those endpoints and move them back and align them. Now I'm going to go to the edit ribbon and I'm going to use the measure tool and I'm going to pull a couple dimensions here for our notch. I want to know how far down off the top it's going to be, what its overall depth is and width. So it looks like three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. I'm also this bump here that we've got. Um, we'll go ahead and see where that starts and its overall length. 
Now for our demonstration, we're going to add this piece of curved geometry as part of the concrete. That way we get the general overall boundary of what we need to consider when placing our block and it's one piece instead of perhaps two. I'm going to offset this construction line and it's one of the benefits of having it there and come down the distance we've just measured, which is three and a half inches. And then we'll do three quarters of an inch, 0.75. Now we'll select our blue or our block shape and we're going to use direct modification to drag midpoints to go ahead and create that notch. So we're just coming out three quarters of an inch. If you're having trouble snapping, not to worry. Rely on your construction lines, copy them into place so that you can easily snap to them. All right, let's go ahead and add that bump out. Again, we'll use our existing construction lines to help lay things out. We're going to copy this one from the outside edge downward. We'll go two and five eighths of an inch. And then we'll copy it once again. Two and a half inches. From here, we'll use direct modification to go ahead and modify our cutting part. We'll use the midpoint and create new edge points. We'll change, we'll select that point we dragged out, turn it to an arc point, and that's automatically going to provide the rounding. Now, ours is a little bit too far out, I think, so we'll just come in here and double check that distance off the, the face, which is only a half an inch. There we are, drag it right in, and there you go. Now, all we need to do is cut our main block shape, the blue block, with the cutting parts or the purple blocks. We'll go up to the edit ribbon and choose part cut. Select the part we want to cut and then select the cutting part. Repeat for each cavity and then you can delete those pieces. The last step is to export it to a shape file and then bring it into the shape catalog. So we're going to move this block over to the model origin. The way we want it positioned is that the block is centered on the plane, so vertically, as you can see, and that its front left side is at 0, 0, as you can see. We'll go to File Menu, Export, SketchUp, and then give the output name, and it's going to save this directly into our model folder for us. And then we're going to hit Create Selected with the block that we just modeled as uh, selected. We can then go ahead and navigate, file, catalogs, and then the shape catalog and choose the importation command and navigate to that file we've just created and hit open. The tool is going to analyze the shape and we're going to be asked to import or replace if it was replacing a shape of the same name. And then we can go ahead and we want to save our changes. From here, we can go to the applications and components side pane and open up our CMU wall tool. We can then select and navigate inside the shape catalog for the shape that we've just created with the notch. Hit all right. We'll go ahead and just adjust some of the parameters here so that we're getting a little bit just to test our block and make sure that it comes in in the correct position. Let's go ahead and draw us a little wall. There we are. Oh. Looks like our end block wasn't uh, set to the correct shape. Let's just get a better look here. Copy this. And go to our end conditions. Change the full block. We'll do the same for the bond. And then hit modify. Select the wall and hit modify. There we are. All right. And everything's looking to line up. Our mortar joints look good. And there we are. And that's going to wrap up this workflow. A couple of things to remember. Make sure you're as accurate as you need to be when creating your shapes with the native Tecla tools. Create cutting parts that are slightly larger than your overall shape. And make sure you're exporting to SketchUp. The reason for this method over other shape creation methods, it allows you to accurately control the position of the object when it is exported, plus it creates a SketchUp file that you can archive and have as a backup in the future. Ensure that when you're creating a new library of shapes that you do so in a new blank model and not an existing project. This will help keep things clean and allow an easier management of those new shapes into your company firm folder for use on every project. 
If you'd like to create a library and store it in your firm folder, you can check out our video on housing your shape catalog in a company firm folder, which the link can be found in this video's description. And that is going to conclude our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on this topic or on other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, articles, support tutorials, and more.